One of the most important gifts you can give yourself is time. And Sherry Glenness is time for you. Time to think about decisions, about opinions, about ideas that are in your mind. And some of them are good. Some of others should be modified. <laughs> God yeah. bless you, Jule. How are you? Thank God blessed. Praise Victory. God. Yeah. How about you? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Praise the Lord. Happy to be here again with Sammy. Welcome, Sammy. Uh, I'm happy to be here <laughs> together with you in sharing gladness. That's great. Today, we are going to speak about open-minded people. How open-minded you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> If I you had to, to answer, I yes. think we, we would say that everybody has some limitations in that. Uh-huh. Maybe you consider yourself open-minded, but let's see if it is true. <laughs> yes. And I think also in some areas, in some areas you're open-minded, but in some others, no, you have your mindset and you want it to be like, like that, that way. Yes, that's true. To be open-minded means having the ability to consider all their perspectives, you know, to try to be empathetic uh, to other people, even when you disagree with them. But have you seen those cases in which people don't want even to listen to the other's opinion? Yes. It happens <laughs> a lot. That they are, they don't want to listen to any opinion and they don't want to try anything to see if it's better mm -hmm. that way. That's true. They say, it's good like this and don't let me try anything else. I know it's like that. Yeah. So when you say those kind of things, Definitely, you are not open-minded. Yeah, That's when one you, of the signs. You believe that what you think is just the right thing, that there is no other option. Yeah, right. Of course, open-mindedness has its limits. Like you already said, it doesn't imply that you should sympathize with every ideology because our, we have ideologies that definitely we don't agree with them. But a, go a good point or something good that you can do is at least to listen to that person and try to understand why he or she thinks like that. So, of course, you, you might think, okay, I disagree. I, I disagree, for instance, with gender ideology. I disagree, <laughs> yes. With, abortion, yeah. <laughs> with the fact that people deny that there is heaven and hell. But let's talk to them. Let's try to see why they think like they think. Have you had that experience? Well, in my case, yes. I have talked to some people who we don't agree. From, from the very beginning, I know we don't agree. But I say, okay, I'll try to listen to. If after a while, because sometimes you are listening to them. And they are not willing to listen to you. Yes, that's a problem. So also. I hear for a while and then if I see that there is no progress, I'm going to be the only one listening and they don't want to listen to my point of view. I will leave it just like that. Yes, it's better not to remain there, you know, with the controversy. Sammy, how about you? It has happened to me that many times I notice that people are just too sharp yes you <laughs> notice that they don't want to try anything so you better just it happens to me for example concerning sound or music that you go to places and you notice something is not not good uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, maybe you want to help because you approach you, and you try to help you try to tell them like you could fix that doing this or that and you notice the person is like no Uh, no we always do, do it, it like this <laughs> so you say okay no problem you know in your mind in your heart that you could help them you yes. could fix it but we can uh, obligate people to receive help yeah and that's one of the problems you just mentioned that they um, thought that that way they have been doing things is the correct and only way to do them That's one of our mistakes when yeah. we think that there is only that way to do things because then we are close to listen to other opinions, to find new ways. I have experienced that with traffic. 
Sometimes I see <laughs> that there is a road, everyone takes the same road. Yes. And it's totally packed with cars. And then <laughs> I say, well, I think I can take this other way. And then I go and, oh, this is like a miracle because you go straight without being in that traffic jam. Mm -hmm. And then I have uh, concluded that it is because we put in our minds that this is the way. One of the suggestions for you to start being open-minded is to start doing changes in your routine. That's what I heard. So if you have been accustomed to do everything exactly in the same way, you should modify that. Have you tried it? Yes, I have. Uh, it, it happens a lot when you are accustomed to go to the same restaurant uh -huh. and yeah. asking for the same menu <laughs> yeah. always. And um, I remember my, my sister always tells me, I like trying new Nothing. dishes and uh -huh. seeing how it tastes. And if it doesn't taste the same as what I'm accustomed, it's a good thing, she says. Okay. Maybe in that area, I'm not sure if I'm like that. <laughs> oh. Concerning food. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But something else that I have noticed also that influences us is uh, mentorship. Uh -huh. Like, I have discovered that many of us have a mentor in an area. Yes. Like, you preach a certain way because your mentor taught you. Mm -hmm. Or you even uh, sweep or mop <laughs> uh -huh. at home in a certain way because they taught you that way. And something that we can do is after we know how to do something according to our mentorship, uh -huh. then we can go and see other uh, streams. Yeah. You know, there are other streams of how to do things and they also know and they have good results. Mm -hmm. Many times we think a good result is only obtained this manner. Right. But there are many ways to get to the same result. So when you start seeing how others do things and reading up how others got the results mm -hmm. maybe you start saying okay i'm not the only one that can do it and the way i do it is not the only way it should be done yes that's true that's true for instance cooking have you tried yeah. different ways <laughs> of course <laughs> every I one of us have do heard that. <laughs> i don't know if your mom you had the experience with your mom you you start doing something and they say no first you have to put the potato <laughs> well with my mom she yeah she's like that also but in my case i i started to cook since i was very young so i like to try new things and I hear do it this way I will try it in my case but with my mom and my sister they want it one way because they, many <laughs> times they will say my grandma said it was first to put the potato and then you can put this yeah. thing and many times it doesn't make changes yes. many times it doesn't make changes there are some things that yes for example if you put vegetables too early yeah uh -huh. then they will become so soft so smooth that, right. that even it will melt in your mouth so you don't want that so that's a good reason but many times we don't have even reasons um yeah it's just because yeah many times you know i in the experience i was telling you that you try to help somebody and they say no because my mentor Told said so. it is like that and you ask them but do you know why your mentor told you it is like that and they will say i don't know but he said <laughs> so many times we are not looking for the reasons why we do things in a certain way so that's why talking is very important more when you want to agree or even disagree with somebody else i have uh, seen people that they hate when they receive a no and there are no explanations for that Mm -hmm. And there are there are explanations. Even when there is not an explanation, you can tell the person, I'm sorry, I don't know why, but um, my pastor, my leader, my husband told me to do it in that way. Maybe I should ask. Yes, I don't know the why, but I should ask. I remember that there is a story. I don't know who was the one who told it. But that this woman who was cooking and frying a fish and always will remove the tail because it was like for her, she said, no, in my house, they didn't fry it with it. But her husband <laughs> wanted to eat that part because it uh. was crunchy. And he was asking, why you don't fry? No, in my house, my mother always remove it. Then she asked the mother, mother, 
what is the cause, uh, it is tastier or something. She said, no, my fry pan was too small. It didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reason. <laughs> you see? Uh -huh. So that's why it is important to be open to talk to people, even yeah. if we disagree, even if we know, oh, I, I don't like the way or uh, he thinks or she uh, does things, but let's try to find out why. It yeah. is that way for hair, good, <laughs> and why, uh, I think in a different way. You could be convinced even more of your own beliefs or of your own ways after you hear somebody. You say, okay, this is the right way. I have witnessed that. Sometimes I am in a specific case, like the only one who thinks in certain way. So I wonder, should I be, you know, different or... Uh, am I wrong? So I decided <laughs> to talk to another person that probably has more experience. And okay, listen to this. This and this and this is happening. So what do you think? If the person says the same thing, I'm probably thinking then I know I am on the correct path. But if not, then yeah. we need to modify. We need to change. So let's see some characteristics of open-minded people. Uh, one of them is that they believe others have a right to share their beliefs and thoughts. So you are open. You only, you always want to give the opportunity to speak, to clarify, to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one, they want to hear what other people have to say that has uh, too much relationship with the previous one. They are humble about their own knowledge and expertise. To be humble, when you think that you are an expert, when you think that you studied, that you have uh, too much experience about that, but to be humble, is that easy? Um, I think it depends on how the person was raised up. Mm -hmm. uh, I have noticed that there is a lot of people that when they achieve something, when they get to do something good, They start praising themselves and <laughs> letting everybody know how they did it. And uh, they forget, many times they forget that you can learn, and you can do something good. Um, the other day, like I think two days ago, I was looking at a video about a, a theme that I already supposedly know. Okay. I just saw it because I like to see how uh, what others say about something that I already know. Uh-huh. Or that I think I already know. <laughs> yes. And uh, I I learned something. I saw the whole video and everything the the guy said, I knew it, but there was one thing I didn't know. So I was so impressed. Uh -huh. And I told my wife you should never reject something because you think you already know it because yeah. I saw the whole video I think it was 10 minutes and maybe the thing I didn't know maybe it was 30 seconds right <laughs> and you enriched <laughs> you enriched your knowledge yeah so now I can say I learned something else and it was just like 30 seconds mm -hmm. of all those 10 minutes yeah but I think it's very useful what I learned So many times we are like that. I yeah. already know it. I already went to yeah. classes. I already... In my case, I enjoy even uh, receiving training in things that I was already receiving the training, yeah? Uh, to strengthen or maybe because there will be elements that are new mm -hmm. and you don't know them or you don't remember. So it is always nice to do that. Well, um, to have empathy to other people. So what does it mean <laughs> to have empathy? Really? <laughs> I think to understand them, to, to try to put your, yourself in their shoes, in their situation, in their conditions. I think that's, and that's not easy. Yeah. Because even though when we read in the Bible to laugh with the ones who laugh and to cry with the ones to cry, uh, who cry, It's not easy because sometimes your emotions are too strong and you see the other person laughing and you say, but why is not me? <laughs> why am not the one laughing? And uh -huh. if you see them crying, why are they crying? It is not that uh, serious this. <laughs> so yes. to be empathetic, I think it's not that easy, but it is good. Mm -hmm. And if you are an open-minded person, you should be like that. 
don't get angry when you are wrong yes or when <laughs> others are wrong because sometimes you realize the way you thought it's not the correct one and then you get angry oh i shouldn't uh, have speaking to this person because of these and that no if you are humble enough then you have to be uh, quiet calm in your spirit to receive and to acknowledge to receive a correction and to acknowledge that you were wrong and they are able to have their ideas challenged because there are people that they know that they know and they don't want others to question mm -hmm. them even you should question yourself because probably you are not correct in the way you think and you are doing things have you heard about uh, intellectual humility <laughs> not the expression i i understand maybe the what they mean but mm -hmm. never heard it like that yeah i i was also impressed because it was a new way and in two words you say a lot but we should exercise that intellectual humility to be able to acknowledge that. And uh, I think that many of those who were great men of science in the past, because we cannot um, reject or despise what they, they understood, or what they achieved. Mm -hmm. But many of us know that science has been um, developing Uh -huh. And many things that were like the great discovery 100 years ago, now they discovered it was not like that. Yes. So at that moment, that person went, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> he discovered this. And now somebody that I don't know if saying if the person is greater or, or what, but they discovered it was not so. But maybe what the, the other one did mm -hmm. is useful. Yeah. It's useful for them to continue studying and researching and... So many times uh, when we discover something, we feel like, oh, <laughs> and then we don't even know that 10 years later, somebody's going to just yeah. say it was not like that. But what you did was useful for us to continue researching. And I think in that point now that you say I, I already developed something or discovered something is because of somebody told you or somebody started something. So I think we are in that process, even with science, that that was not And that was right at the moment and now it is not anyway they opened the way they were the ones who may were trying to discover something and that's what has given the the, the path to us so, so i think we should understand that also that it is not just we are the starting point we're not yeah. we are in the process it's a structure and it's like if somebody is establishing some bases and on uh -huh. top of it there is and many times there is something at least for us to deconstruct uh -huh. uh, maybe you were not interested in something but when somebody said something it makes you think about it and see if it's so or not so if that person didn't appear <laughs> yeah maybe nobody <laughs> said anything about nothing about it Yeah, and sometimes you listen to people who give so excellent speeches and they, when you analyze, they are simple. The words are simple, the ideas are simple, but nobody else dared to speak about those things openly. Mm -hmm. So uh, some people could say, no, that's nothing. He didn't say anything new, but what Go you didn't say before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's not only what they say. Is the the boldness uh -huh. to say it in front yeah. of a camera, in front of people who might judge you, right. as you are judging him <laughs> right now? <laughs> <laughs> And the other say is um, the how. How you say those things? Because of course we understand many things, but when it is the moment to transfer to help others to to get the same idea, wow. It's difficult. It's difficult because people have different ideas, different feelings, different experience. And then you will have to reach each one of them in the same or with through the same speech. So it's not an easy thing. I don't know how um, time is going because... <laughs> I, we have still a couple of minutes. Okay, because <laughs> otherwise I don't say anything about this. Um, I was remembering that I always tell my... When I'm looking at somebody giving some speeches 
or a conference or whatever speakers that become famous many times i tell my wife like wow this man or this woman they really know how to speak they really know about what they are talking and he's famous because there's a reason for him to be famous mm -hmm. but then there are some other cases in which i tell her i really don't know why he's famous oh yes it has happened to me like i i feel what he's saying is just something normal but what you are saying um is making me understand <laughs> that is not about the message itself but the how and the process the person had to go through for him to be able to say it in public uh -huh. so many times we despise speeches Yeah. or conferences just because we say okay i i already knew that <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of the intellectual humility if you are a knowledgeable person if you know too much to be able to sit down to listen to another person with a simple message yeah. and to say okay was good thank you <laughs> sister jurley when you translate or or inter interpret it is easier to do it from your chair than doing it in the stage no or Oh, yes, yay. always from your chair, always. Because, because all of us, when we start learning a language and we see somebody interpreting in front, we always say, why he didn't say it like this? Yeah. Why he didn't say it like that? And when we are up there, we we also, oh, why I didn't say it like this? Because it's so fast. And you find the words so, e it's so fast yeah. when you're seated, but when you're there, no, they don't flow. <laughs> so that's something important that we should uh, remember when we are seeing preachers or people on stage or singing. Why he didn't um, do it like this? But many times we have to put ourselves in that position. Yes, the pressure. That is to be empathetic and... Mm -hmm. And to know that it's not easy when you're being under pressure, yeah. filmed, <laughs> broadcasted. <laughs> everything, yeah. everything. And to be also open to make mistakes. And okay, I will do it despite Leave I game. made so many mistakes <laughs> this time. Yes, to be willing to persevere doing the same thing. Because there are people that once they have made a mistake, they say no more. Yeah, I, I won't go quit. again, yes, to that platform to do it. Okay, so oh, to be open-minded. How open-minded you are. Today, I think you got an answer. And if you realize that you are not that open-minded as you thought, today could be a good day to start being like that. So this was Sharing Gladness. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Jurley. Thank you, Lita. <laughs> <laughs> And we hope to meet you again in a new program. God bless you.